If you're looking to cash out from your current property without selling it, you should watch this. Hey guys, this is Marcus and today I'm going to share with you something interesting called the equity term loan, some call it gear up, so that you can actually cash off some money from your property without selling it. And why are we talking about this is because today right, you may have seen this article before saying that property buyers today are getting younger and younger and prior to the contrary believe that youngsters in future will be very hard for them to buy properties right, this article actually shows you otherwise. Looking at this chart, you are able to see that the buyers who are at the age between 25 to 36 years old in 2015 was only at about 9% of total buyers. And fast forward 9 years later right about 8 to 9 years later today we are talking about 38% of the buyers being 35 and under what does it tell you now a lot of parents are worried that their kids cannot buy a house in future and also some of you who are currently working and just started working right is worried that next time are you able to buy a private property the answer over here is very clear because the proportion of buyers buying a private property 35 years old and under is actually one third of the entire buyer population today in the private property market. And one thing that you may have noticed is that the buyers who are at the age 45 and above, right, back in 2015, 47% of the buyers were actually above the age of 45 years old. But today, right, we are just talking about 25%. So 47% versus 25%, right, it means that the buyers above the age of 45 years old has dropped by almost 50%. And what does it tell you? Basically, it just tells you that actually for the older people, it's getting harder for them to buy property. In fact, for the younger generations, they are the ones that are predominantly the buyers who are buying. If you are a youngster, just started working, you should plan to buy a private property before you turn 35 years old, save up enough and have sufficient income to buy it before you're 35 years old because actually one third of the buyers in the private property markets are 35 years old. So it's getting more and more common for people under the age of 35 years old to start building their wealth through acquiring private properties. So the solution today for some of the people that have met out there right now is that they can consider doing an equity term loan or gear up. A kind of refinance to help you to take out some cash from your current property so that you can use this to assist your growing up kid as down payment for their property purchase. So how this video is going to work is number one, why is it getting harder to buy a private property? I'm going to show you what happened over the years in the private property market and government measures to give you some clarity on what to expect next. Number two, I'm going to share with you what is equity term loan and how to do the calculation. Point number three, I will share with you what a young adult should be looking forward to and if you are a parent, what can you do to assist them? And lastly, my recommendations on what you should be doing now. So if you are someone like me who loves watching finance related videos and also how to grow your wealth through private properties using facts and figures, do me a favour by liking this video because it's going to help me a great deal. Thank you so much. Today, if you look over here, right, why are we saying that buying a private property is getting more and more difficult? This is in the year 2017, buying an OCR property in Park Rivera. You know, I love using Park Rivera as an example because my first private property was there. And earlier on when we mentioned, right, today for youngsters to buy a private property, why I regard 35 years old as a youngster? Because I bought my first private property when I was at 35 years old. So I still fall under the average age, still considered the youngsters buying private property. And back then to buy a three bedroom, I only had to fork out $259,000 and my required income for 40 years old was actually $7,200. And I was 35, like I said. But if you were 40 years old, you actually have to have an income of $7,200. And that was the time in the Facebook era, Facebook, you always see ads running, people say that, did you know that with an income of $8,000, in your family, you are able to upgrade to the private property with extra savings in your bank account. Nowadays, you realize you don't see that anymore, right? Because agents also don't dare to put that advertisement. Because today, if you are 8,000 income, you cannot buy EC unless you have a lot of cash. You can certainly not be able to buy a private property with $8,000 combined income really due to the total debt servicing ratio. In fact, right, fast forward in two cycles from 2017 to 2024, today you actually need a down payment of $539,000 cash plus CPF and a combined income of $15,000. Today, with the median income of Singaporeans being at about $11,000, right, is $15,000 considered affordable for a family to buy a private property today? And why I'm saying that this is after two cycles? Because in 2017, in order to sell without paying seller stamp duty, right, you need to hold for a period of four years before selling. And from 2021 onwards, right, in order to sell without 
incurring seller stamp duty, you need to hold for three years period. So typically, a lot of people buying a private property, they will start searching around looking for opportunities to buy the next one or to swap their current asset to the next asset after they clear their seller stamp duty, which is a common thing. And going back to my point, right over here, just after seven years difference from just having to earn 7.2, today you need to earn double. The down payment also double already. So what it's telling you is that you should buy as early as possible lah, because it's not going to get easier. And the people that waited from 2017 and they are waiting for price to drop, today totally cannot buy anything. So why are you watching this video? Obviously because you have bought previously lah, or you have saved up even more or maybe in 2017 you are not even eligible to buy. So watch till the end because I'm going to give you some solution if you are at that age but you are short for some down payment, maybe you could be able to get a bit of help from your family if the correct structure has been in place from the beginning. So if you're just starting to look for a private property today, right, you'll be wondering why is it getting more difficult? Let me just go back to history to share with you a bit more for you to have a greater understanding. So in year 2010, right, when I first made my first pop goal by being a real estate agent, I want to buy a private property. Back then, it was 90% loan, meaning to say 10% down payment, 90% loan. In 2010, it changed to 80%, making the down payment higher. In the year 2012, right, government came up with this thing called the total debt servicing ratio whereby they calculate your loan eligibility based on 60% of your monthly income minus all kinds of financial commitments like credit card loans, car loans, study loans and whatnot. Further making it more difficult with a flow rate of 3.5% even though back then the interest rate were at about 2%. Next, a couple of years later, right, what the government did was to reduce the loan to value to 75%. Means you need to pay 25% down payment for buying a property. After that, government reduced the total debt servicing ratio to 55% and the floor rate at 4%. Last but not least, the most recent one, there is higher medium term rates. Means to say that today, the bank solar rates is at 4 However, your loan assessment is done based on 4.8% making it even more and more difficult. Meaning to say, you need to have a higher income and more savings to buy a private property. Now next, I'm going to talk about why is equity term loan and how you can qualify to actually buy it. So for the bank, right, buying a private property, some people will say that, hey, today if I buy a private property, it's not good. Why? Because I rather buy stocks and shares because stocks and shares are much more liquid, easier to cash out when I need the money. Property, you cannot do that. Actually, it's not true uh, because property, as long as there's a profit that you are sitting on, you are able to go to the bank and do a remortgage in order to get back cash in times of needs. Especially for this topic right now we are talking about if let's say you want to support your kid by helping your kid with some of the down payment, right? This is something that you can do. So today, right, let's use an example. In year 2010, you bought a private property, three bedroom in the OCR at let's say $1 million. Achievable? Highly achievable. Fast forward to year 2024, today the property is worth $2 million. Is it achievable? Let me know inside the comments. So back in 2010, the down payment was 20%. So you would have taken an 800k loan. And after 10 years of wait, right, most likely you will have an outstanding loan of 600k when you are actually in year 2024. Or it could be even lesser. And let's assume that you use 200k of CPF and over time, right, 200k multiplied by 10 years, your total CPF plus accrued interest will be 260000 And importantly, you need to know this because when you're calculating how much you can actually gear up from your current asset, this CPF accrued interest is actually being taken into consideration as well. So how the equity term loan works is that you use the current $2 million, you multiply by 75%, which is the loan that you are eligible to take up for, means to say that today you take up for a loan of $1.5 million. And with the loan eligibility, of $1.5 million, you minus the outstanding loan of 600 k and you need to actually factor in the CPF accrued interest that you need to refund back to your CPF but you won't be refunding it back. It's just for calculation because you cannot loan based on your CPF. So you need to put the 260 k inside. Means to say that what the loan that you're eligible to get from this existing property will be $640,000. And is this a separate mortgage or refinance? No, this is another term loan that is packed onto your mortgage loan, which you still need to pay your monthly installment for this. And let's say today you are at the age of 50 years old. How much do you need to make in order to qualify for the loan of this size? So in terms of equity term loan, you need to qualify for the loan. And secondly, right, for the new installment, 
you need to assess whether you, it's comfortable for you to pay for that monthly installment. I would say that today, this is quite popular for people who have purchased their property much earlier, like before 2010s, or people who have bought their properties in 2005 because before property prices has increased by about 70%. You will stand a better chance of doing so. And one more thing is for people who didn't utilize CPF, right? This can be easier also because if let's say a huge chunk of your property monthly commitment or your down payment has been utilizing CPF, right? We if you add on all the accrued interest, like I said, the more CPF you use means the lesser cash you can qualify to withdraw from this loan. So therefore, this is very important. I won't be able to go through all the details within this video itself because all the situations are different. So if you need any help, right, seek a professional or I'm just a phone call away. And one more thing to take note is, is the interest super high. So for the 640,000 loan that you are getting, you are able to get a fixed rate today at 3% per annum. So if let's say you are taking a 640,000 loan, means to say that you are paying about 20,000 worth of interest every single year. So you do your own mental assessment or your own risk assessment to see that whether is it worth taking out this 640,000 to help your child buy a private property. And now, why am I using this 640,000 as an example? Because today with 640,000, this down payment is able to help your child qualify for a property worth two to $2.2 million, assuming if they qualify for the loan. In terms of the loan-wise for your child, that will be in a separate video altogether because it's gonna get very, very lengthy. There are definitely ways like show funds, pledge your money and all these to help your child get slightly higher loan if they actually have a shortfall. But ideally, your child should be already working in the workforce and have a monthly income. And for loan eligibility, right, the interesting thing is as long as your son is working for an MNC, you don't even need three months of your pay slip. You literally just need an employment letter to say that you started working, you accepted the offer, and the bank can actually grant you the loan. For those that are working for an SME or not an MNC, you will require three months of pay slip for the bank to do your loan assessment. So long story short, if your child has just started working, this can be an option for them. Now, here are my recommendations. So in this case, whereby I'm using this as a case study because I recently just met a client like this, you need to do your assessment. Is it worth paying 20,000 interest every year just to help your child buy a private property? I'll just use a very simple way to do my math. Today, just ask yourself this question. The property that you hope your child can buy, will the price go up by more than 20,000 per annum? So just using Singapore inflation, for example, it increases by average about 2% per annum. And for a $2 million property, which is the property you hope that your child can eventually own, right? Every year, if the property goes up by 2%, does it mean the price will actually go up by 40K? So if the price goes up by 40K per annum and you're paying 20,000 to avoid them having to pay 40,000 increase every year, right? Is it called delayed gratification? Let me know inside the comments. And looking at this slide over here, you can see that the resale private property market since 2015 until today, the prices have went up by a total of 41%. If you divide it by 11 years, you get about 4% per annum. If it's a $2 million property, it means to say every year it goes up on average about sixty dollars to even up to $80,000. So paying twenty dollars per annum for your interest versus your child having to pay seventy dollars to $80,000 more each year they wait to buy their $2 million property, is it worth it? If you are following this channel for quite a bit, we have always been advocating buying early, being prudent, saving up young to buy your first property as soon as you can. And as parents, if you can help your children, do them a favor. And if you ask me for my recommendation, I would think today, let's run to something that you can afford to. Don't worry about in future where you want to stay. Because today, if you are in your age 20 to 30 years old, right, trust me, eventually your family plans will cause you to move your house. Even you save up enough to buy the dream location today. When you hit 35 years old and your kids are going to primary school, you will still have to shift. So in order to avoid being priced out of the market, look into buying early and if you are a parent, if you can do, consider this method to help your child buy a private property. Do give me a call, happy to assist you with that. And as always, if you enjoy content like this, do me a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel and turn on the notification bell because we post weekly real estate videos like this. And hope you learned something today and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!